So let's talk a bit about uh, Void Linux, I guess. I've, uh, I've been using Void Linux. It, may, it has been how much? I would say two months, two months and a half. Let me show you my new fetch. Uh, Background-wise, I've came from Arch Linux. I've used, uh, w I started using Linux. It's been uh, two years, I think. I've used uh, Ubuntu and Linux Mint for about six months. And then essentially I launched myself into Arch Linux. I've stayed in Arch for one year. And then I, I don't know, I, I think I got bored. I think I got, um, I, 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 grown, I grew contemptuous or something uh, towards it. And essentially I decided to change. So I tried, to go, I tried going for something different. And I think that the something different that I was looking for is exactly Void Linux. It's a distro that I've liked a lot. I'm going to talk about the whys in just a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, Void Linux, let's see. Essentially, for starters, if, you go, if you're planning on getting into Void Linux, obviously you need some Linux experience. Again, it's not exactly the most beginner friendly distro. For starters, if you plan on installing it, the installer is not graphical, it's on the command line. And it's not a harder in, a hard installer to use. It's certainly easier installing Void Linux than it is installing Arch, for example. Arch, everything is on the terminal. But um, if you, uh, but the, the installer for Void actually it's it is graphical but and curses based, which means that you have to install uh, to start it through the terminal. But then you have a terminal style GUI, I guess you can say that, and you essentially move about. You just set a bunch of parameters. You give your time zone. Most people that have already installed Linux would be able to do it all right, except that you have to do partitioning manually and partitioning by using FDisk. So if you have never used FDisk, which is a command line tool for partitioning, it may be kind of strange at, uh, at startup because uh, y you have keyboard based commands and you don't have a graphical representation of what it is that you're doing. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to install Void Linux. Otherwise support I think that um, after you install it, the repositories, uh, you need to set your mirror straight before you start downloading anything because the speeds may vary. But if, if you set a mirror that's uh, close by, if you choose your repositories well enough, you should have no problems with speed. XBPS itself is a very fast packet manager, I would say, with regards to installing and unpacking the packages. Uh, and it will depend mostly on your internet connection and also uh, on how close you are to your repository. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, with regards to software, if, you, if you've been using Arch Linux, you know of this wondrous, wondrous thing called the AUR. And uh, let's go there actually. Let me just open up my Firefox. Let me pull up the AUR. And if you take a look at the AUR, you see that you have uh, quite a lot of packages. You have about 60,000. And if you compare it with the, the Arch Linux's, uh, with, sorry, with the Void Linux's repository, you can do an XBPS query. XBPS query is the equivalent of an apt search, for example, if you're using Ubuntu or a Pacman dash uh, capital S for synchronized. Um, you can do then an XBPS query uppercase R for repository, S for search, and L for list. This will list all the packages that are contained in the remote repository. So if I do an enter here, it will show me everything that uh, my repository has for Void Linux. These are all the packages that are available. I will essentially do a word count, and then I'll count the number of lines. Then I'll, I'll know how many packages I have. So XBPS, uh, we have uh, quite a lot less. We have uh, 15,000 but uh, they are not necessarily badly chosen, these 15,000. I would say that unless you are running extremely, extremely spe specific software, you're not going to have any problems running Arch Linux, uh, sorry, Void Linux. And uh, you have pretty good support, I would say. Uh, and things that you normally would find on the EUR for Arch, you can find pretty quickly on directly on the repositories for Arch, uh, for Void. So I keep, I keep saying Arch, I've got my head all mixed up. But uh, 
things that you that on Arch Linux you would usually find on the AUR, you are actually finding on the main package repository, which I think is a plus. So for example, I work with uh, network engineering. One thing that I use a lot is GNS3. If I do a search for it, uh, GNS3, for those of you who don't know, is a network simulator, emulator. I mean, you give it a router and switch images and it essentially, sorry, emulates a network for you. And uh, on, the, for, on the Void Linux repository, it's directly on the repo. Uh, uh, and one thing that you annoyed me quite a bit is that, uh, let's put up the Arch Wiki, Arch Wiki. Uh, one thing that annoyed me about Arch is that uh, the only way to install GNS3 is through the AUR and it has some known bugs uh, too. So where did I find, you know, here you go about the installation always. Oh, really? So maybe it's not here that I found, but uh, essentially somewhere uh, I read about the uh, I think that uh, this is the, uh, where it talks about it. But uh, somewhere I, I read that uh, essentially you have some problems regarding Python and GNS3 through the uh, through the AUR. So if you do an installation from source, you may be breaking some of your Python uh, pa uh, packages on Arch Linux. This is kind of annoying. This has prompted me to not really dabble in installing GNS3 on my Arch machine. Now on my old machine, it's just about uh, installing it directly from the repository. So I think it's pretty good. Uh, putting that aside, what else can I say? So yeah, the package management is uh, not really that complicated. Uh, what you have to keep in mind is that you have separate uh, binaries for each one of your of your functions. So for example, we saw that we, you can do a query by doing this, and this uh, is equivalent of an apt search, for example, or a pacman uh, dash uppercase s lowercase s. Okay. So if you want to search for a package, say I, uh, I just did that, I searched for a uh, GNS3 here, it shows the matches on the repository database. And then if I want to install that package, then I go about xbps install, and then I would do an, uh, an S, uppercase S for synchronize. I can give it a Y too. This may be familiar for you Arch users. The Y here does not mean the same thing that it meant on uh, Arch. On Arch, I can't remember what it means, but uh, here on Void, the Y actually means say yes to everything. So if I do it without, I don't, uh, it won't let me install, but if I try to install, say Skype, I can try doing this. And then you can see that it will update the, the repository. I have to sudo that, sorry. And then he will query the repository. And essentially it will give me a prompt. So it will ask me, do you want to install, confirm, yes or no? And uh, by giving the why, I can simply avoid doing that and say yes to every prompt that is given to me. So here is going to take some time. I'm going to quit out of that. This is how XBPS install works, uh, quite simply. And then you also have uh, XBPS remove. As the name indicates, you just use it to remove the packages. So you just give it a package name. Say I wanted, uh, say I had just installed Skype. I would just remove it. I can remove it by that, by doing this. These are the basics for XBPS. Again, you, we can go in much more detail. There is also uh, something called XBPS source, which allows you to install packages from source. I haven't used it quite yet. I know that it's uh, a very big thing. I will probably talk about it uh, in a later date, but right now. I don't have really any ex examples to give on it. And this is package management. Again, simple. You do have uh, less packages, but I would say that the selection that they did are pretty good. You're going to find all your usual suspects. You're going to find the uh, drivers as well. You're going to find GIMP. You can see that I have it here. You're, you're going to start Turnabug, but you also have some good command line tools. So you have uh, your Vim, you have uh, uh, those uh, very weird uh, i3 i3 centric programs so for example you'll find ncmp cpp is that how you type it i think uh cp cpp something like that the that music player ncm there you go and curses music player daemon plus plus or something like that 
uh, music player client and uh, yeah you're going to find your usual suspects you're going to find i3 you're you're actually also going to find uh, xbps query rs you're going to find i3 and also the 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 gaps version directly so a lot of things that you would get from the aor if you are on arch you're going to find on the main repository which i think is a plus it's it means less source code to deal with essentially of course, if that's your thing, do, de dealing with source code, you always can do that manually. But at least you have the option of installing the um, uh, these kind of binaries. That's about it for XBPS. What else can you talk about? Uh, another thing where it differs, if you open up uh, OpenSSL, this is, of course, the cryptographic uh, library that... Uh, you use on Linux. So for example, if you're browsing the web, if you're using TLS, HTTPS, this kind of stuff for secure web uh, connectivity, you're going to use OpenSSL. So this manages certificates, this manages uh, cryptography in general. If I do a version here, you will see that it's not really running OpenSSL, but rather it is running LibreSSL, which is essentially the same library, the same set of core functionality, except that you have a much leaner code base, I would say. So you have a, a more lightweight version of the same program. It, it, since it uses less source code, it that means that you're also having to uh, less of an attack service. So, you know, uh, back in 2013, 2014, the heart, uh, the heart bleed vulnerability was found on OpenSSL. I believe that's how it comes. Is it heart bleed bug? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can Google it for yourself, but it's essentially a bug, a bug, a bug that they found in the OpenSSL library. And this broke uh, the internet, the security of the internet for a lot of people. So, you know, ever since then, people have been working on this, uh, on this kind of projects in parallel and trying to rebuild a more secure version of uh, OpenSSL, which culminates in LibreSSL. So this is one thing that I find very interesting with Void. What else can I talk about? Uh, I've already did a full video on it. You can check it uh, if you want. But uh, you also you also notice that Void Linux uses something different from Systemd, which is Runit. And Runit is the init scheme essentially. Just like in Systemd, you have a, a number one process that starts all the other processes in your in your system. You have a Runit, which does the same uh, does the same thing to you, and. Uh, if you use systemd, you're probably used to to, uh, to type in things like systemctl start and then, I don't know, network manager or something. Uh, especially if you're an arch, you're going to type, uh, to type this kind of things a lot because services, they are not really enabled by default, so you have to enable them. Uh, here on Runit, what you would do is you would use something called the SV binary. And this essentially controls and, ma and monitors the services that you set up. So, you know, if you have a service for network manager and you want to enable it, for example, so that it begins at startup, instead of doing um, all that good stuff with systemctl enable, what you would do is you would do uh, a, sim a symbolic link between the, the folder containing the service. In this case, I know that it's here, network uh, manager and you would make it on the var service folder and essentially everything that you sim link towards the var service folder is going to become an enabled service after that you can just start services as you would in systemd except you replace systemctl with sv so you can do an sv start network manager you can do an sv stop sv restart and these are the most important things again uh, things that are good to know, I would say, if you're on Void Linux. Um, what else do I have to talk about? Let's go to the Void homepage, see if I have... Uh, oops, what did I do? Up. So, Void Linux. And, uh, yeah, th these are the most important things, I would say. Uh, Void Linux is obviously not a fork, so Unlike, uh, it's different from uh, the other, I would say, major distributions because it's not dependent on Arch Linux or, or Ubuntu or sorry Debian or Red Hat, for example. So this is something of a plus, I would say, the fact that it's independent. 
again it's just an interesting little distro uh, performance wise it's pretty good if I go to H top do I even have H top I think I have top yeah uh, we don't really we are not seeing much in terms of CPU usage it's a very lightweight distro if you install void from scratch it's going to come with really really not that many stuff so this may be a plus for some this may be a minor uh, drawback for others that's why i recommend i would say void linux not necessarily to beginners but definitely if you're a, if you're an older uh, linux user if you've been there for quite a while if you're familiar with arch linux you'll be you i think you'll find void linux is just fine as a distribution it works all right uh, and uh, so far in my two uh, two month two month and a half journey i haven't met any problems so that's about it on my overview of uh, void linux i would say uh thank you for watching i'll be talking about i'll, I'll probably keep talking about it later and uh, i'll see you next time